Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Irina Steinbeck. I'm the founder and managing director at Data Crossroads. We provide training and consulting services to companies that want to get in control of their data and information resources. I have been working in the area of data management for over 10 years. I have compiled my practical experience to develop a model and a practical method to implement and optimize data management. I have called this model the orange model of data management. I have provided an overview of this model in the first presentation of the orange model series. In the first presentation of this video series, we have discussed the key principles of the orange model of data management. We have also talked about how you can develop a data strategy and perform a data management maturity assessment using the orange model. Then we talked about implementing data management in your daily operations and optimization of a particular data management capability. This is the fifth presentation of this series. Today, we will discuss how the Orange model can assist you in the development of data management or data governance related roles. We will explore the following three questions. What is the most popular approach to this at the moment in the data management community? Why should each company adjust this approach to their particular needs? And the most important, how to design a set of roles that meets your company's needs and resources. Let's start with the first question and discuss the current approach. In my opinion, currently there is a lot of confusion regarding the data management roles in the professional community. It reflects the common situation with data management I have discussed in some of my previous articles and presentations. First of all, there are no aligned concepts and terms regarding data management scope and constituent components. Secondly, even the key industry guides provide some general recommendations. Practical implementation is one of the biggest challenges for any company. Take, for example, the data management body of knowledge by Dama International the best known industry reference guide. They provide a rather complex system of data management or data governance roles. Once I have made an attempt to count the number of roles they referred to in the last DAMA publications. Often, when I deliver a workshop, I ask participants one question. How many roles do they think DAMA refers to? The average amount of the roles people think should not exceed 20 or 30. In reality, there are 120. The second challenge is associated with the first one. There are different factors that influence the role's design, like organizational structure, etc. There are also other roles that relate to data management, like system owners, business process owners, etc. So far, I haven't seen any clear explanation of how to deal with that. The third challenge is unaligned terms. Sometimes I come across professional saying, we made such a progress, we identified data stewards and custodians. What is funny, so, is that in the Dama dictionary, they say that the words steward and custodians are synonymous. Still, some people assign to them different accountabilities. The last challenge that I want to mention is the absence of guidance how to adjust the roles. Companies specify the scope and content of data management differently. Companies also have different size and needs. In this presentation, I will show you how to resolve all of these challenges mentioned above. We have briefly discussed with you the challenges that data management professionals experience with role design. Now we will briefly talk about why the roles should be adjusted to the company's reality and practices. I have just mentioned that each company has its own vision on data management and defines the scope and content of data management differently. I have discussed the topic in a lot of my publications, but let's do a brief recap. The key value proposition of data management to its internal and external stakeholders is data delivery of the required quality for different purposes. Data management should set up data value chain to transfer raw data 
into meaningful information. Different data management capabilities should enable data value chain. Core data management capabilities taken into the orange model are data modeling, information systems architecture, data quality, and data management framework. On the slide, they are marked orange. These capabilities are performed by data management professionals. Different capabilities will be required at different stages along the data value chain. For example, data modeling will be required at the stage of gathering data requirements. The data management framework will function alongside the whole data chain. There are also other capabilities that belong to other domains like IT, security, and other business support functions. So when a company designs data management roles, it should have a clear understanding of the scope and definition of data management. Data management capability as a whole and particular data management capabilities can be described in terms of four dimensions. Four key dimensions of data management capabilities are processes, roles, data, and tools. Process means a business process which is a set of activities to reach goals or deliver uh, intended outcomes. Roles are business units or functional roles that are involved in the performing of business processes. Tools are IT systems or applications that enable the performance of business processes. Tools also include resources, for example, financial ones. Data means knowledge to perform the business capability. But data also means data that is required for and produced by the business capability. In the orange model, I consider data as a deliverables or outputs of a business capability. Each company should detail each of these components to be able to implement data management. For each of these components, corresponding roles should be assigned. By now, we have briefly discussed why a company should adjust the standard set of roles to the needs of the company. First, each company defines the scope and content of data management differently. Secondly, each data management capability has four dimensions that require the specification of accountable roles. Now, let's move on to the most challenging and interesting question, how to design a set of roles that fits the needs and practices of your company. First, let's put together a list of factors that influence the design of roles. I have listed seven factors on the slide. There could be more. The first one is the type of data stewards. We will consider which standard data stewards type exist. The second factor is the data management capability dimensions. We have specified them. These are processes, roles, tools, and data. The third factor is the location along the data chain. Data is moving across the company. Accountabilities of different roles will depend on the location of roles along data chains. The fourth factor is data architecture style. I will demonstrate to you how different data architecture influences the design of roles. Not only data architecture, but also the approach to solution design is the factor of influence. The next factor is the definition of data domains. Very often, the accountabilities of roles relate to their business domains. Business domains can be specified differently. Furthermore, it relates to the way of definition of new data creation. And the last factor, which we will take into consideration, is the scope of data management initiatives. Let's start with the first factor, the different types of data stewards. The idea of data stewardship derives from the question about data ownership. A company as a whole owns data. Company delegates data-related tasks to different types of data stewards. I would like to stress that DAMA makes clear that steward and custodian 
are synonymous. Dama specifies a data steward as a personal group that represents the interest of all stakeholders and must take an enterprise perspective to ensure enterprise data is of high quality and can be used effectively. Dama also specifies different types of data stewards. Data stewards can be split into three categories depending on their professional background. The third group is business data stewards or subject matter experts. These are people that have neither data management nor IT professional background. These are people from finance, risk, compliance, sales, product departments, etc. The second group is data management stewards. Here you can think of data architects, analysts, data governance professionals, and so on. And the third group is technical data stewards. So, for example, IT and security specialists. You could add some additional categories that would represent your company situation and needs. The second factor that influences the set of roles is the structure of data management capability. Four dimensions enable a data management capability. Each dimension should have data-related roles. The first one is the process. You may ask, why are business processes related to data management? As I have shown in my presentation about data lineage, business processes should be linked to data lineage. These are regulatory requirements. Dama Dame book also considers business processes as a part of data lineage. The second component is the systems and applications. We should think about the role of system or application owner. The third one is data. Data flows through the organization. Data chains describe the path from the data origin to final destination. For data, we usually speak about data owners and data users that belong to business data stewards. Data management and technical data stewards also participate in the function of data chain. The fourth component is the roles. Here, we often speak about organizational structures. We will come back to the roles associated with this dimension of data and roles in the course of this presentation. The third factor that influences the design of roles is the location along the data chain. The data chain describes the path of transformation of raw data into meaningful information. On this slide, I will show you the relationship between all roles that we have just discussed on the previous slide. Data chains are associated with one or more business processes. Therefore, the business process owner will be accountable for the business processes along the data chain that belong to his accountability. One or more systems and or applications could be involved in the data processing. Each of these applications will have one application owner. Along the chain, several application owners will be involved. Data owners and data users will be accountable for data. We will discuss their accountabilities later. All above mentioned roles will be assigned to business data stewards. Different data management capabilities enable data chain. The orange model recognizes four key data management capabilities. These are data modeling, information systems architecture, data quality, and data management framework. All types of data stewards will perform processes related to these capabilities and deliver corresponding artifacts. The fourth factor is the different types of data architecture. Data architecture will influence the specification of roles that relate to data, business processes, and systems. The first type is canonical architecture. Many companies still have this form of architecture. There are many relationships between sourcing and consuming applications. In professional jargon, they often call it 
spaghetti architecture. The second type of architecture includes a big data platform. The supporting technology architecture got nowadays the name of data fabric. Data from different source system is ingested to the central big data platform. The big data platform has different domains. Data has been processed within the platform and then distributed to different consuming applications. The key question by such platform is location at which data will be integrated and transformed. Will it take place within platform itself or on its way to consumers? The answer to this question will also influence the specification of roles. The third type of architecture is the data mesh platform. The key idea is the data forms two types of domain, sourcing and consuming. Within each domain, data is being processed according to the business requirements of this domain. As we can imagine, these three different architectural styles will require a different design of roles and their accountability. The fifth factor is the approach to the solution architecture. First, let's look at the canonical approach described in TOGAF, the well-known enterprise architectural framework. Enterprise architecture consists of four key architectures, business, data, application, and technology. Enterprise architecture delivers the design. Solution architecture should implement this design in its practice. Therefore, these two domains have been shown separately on the slide. The business architecture delivers business capability mapping which is a holistic view of the company business. Data architecture delivers three types of data models, conceptual, logical, and physical. The combination of these models form the enterprise data model. Nowadays, a few other approaches exist that can help develop solutions. One of them is the domain-driven approach. This approach works together with data mesh architecture, which we have just considered on the previous slide. In this approach, business, data, and solution architecture work together. Data modeling is also organized differently. Here we speak about the combination of business data model, semantic logical data model, and physical model. These differences in approaches will also influence the design of data owner and data user and other data-related roles. The sixth factor is the definition of the accountability domain. Here on the slide, you can see the definition of data owner provided by DAMA. A data owner is a business data steward who has approval authority for decisions about data within their domain. The word domain has no clear meaning. In my practical experience, you can define domain in different ways. In the first case, the domain will be determined by the location along the data chain where new data is being created. Of course, then we will need to define what the creation of new data means and how you can recognize new data. The second approach to specify domain by data content, for example, customer product. Then you will need to specify at which level of data models you are going to do it. The third approach allows you to specify the data domain as an organizational business unit, for example, finance data. The second and third approaches have been used less than the first one. Therefore, we will consider in depth the first approach by the creation of new data. We will consider several scenarios. The first scenario is about unchanged data. Unchanged means that data values remain the same along the whole data chain. The format of data can be changed. We speak now about structured data. Usually, master and reference data represent unchanged here. Here in the slide, you see the example of customer name data element. In this case, the role of data owner 
can be assigned to a business data steward at the beginning of data chain. This is the place where data was initially recorded in the company. The next scenario is the situation when data is being changed. It means that data values are changed as a result of the application of different data transformation rules. For example, the amount indicated on a customer invoice will be transformed to derive to consolidated financial reports. One of the choices a company may say is that data ownership will change at each point where data has been changed. Data owners will also own data transformation rules. The biggest challenge here is to distribute accountability between data owners and data users. It will mean also that the same data steward will play simultaneously both roles depending on data sets. This solution can be used by companies that have rather short data chains. Companies with long data chains should consider other options. For example, the business data steward, when the raw data has been originated, remain accountable for both data and its transformation rules upon the delivery of data to data user. These slides also demonstrate a relationship between system owners and data owners and users. A system owner may deal simultaneously with several data owners and data users. In this presentation, I am not going to discuss the pros and cons of each solution further, as this is a long discussion, but I will definitely come back to this topic in the near future. The final factor that influences the set of data management roles is the organizational structure. Let us take a few examples of roles from Damadem Book 2. Chief Data Steward, Executive Data Steward, Enterprise Data Steward, Coordinating Data Steward. The differences in names and accountabilities originate from the different positions in the hierarchy of an organizational structure. Every company has different organizational structures and levels of hierarchy. The key principle to design roles here is very simple. Assume a business unit took the role of a data user or data owner. The head of business unit will get the accountability to perform this role. Then he or she will delegate the performance of duties to their employees. They will be responsible for the performance of the task. By now, we have talked about seven main factors that influence the design of data management and data governance roles. There is one more thing that is worth mentioning. Data management roles can be either formal functional roles or virtual ones. For example, a data governance steward can be a formal functional role. At the same time, data owners and data users could be virtual roles assigned to already existing functional units of roles. Here on the slide, you see the example of the set of roles. The challenge is that you need to link data management processes and tasks, deliverables, and roles all together. This example is available in my book, Data Management Toolkit. This is the end of this presentation. I hope I have managed to give you an idea about the basics of the orange model of data management. Should you still have questions, please reach out to me to our website datacrossroads.nl or connect with me on LinkedIn. You can also schedule a free 30 minutes consultation with me. Also, if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comment section below this video. Thank you for joining me today.